Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a niblog walkthrough of the Estabrook Specialty Nibs. These are nibs that were handcrafted and designed by different nibmeisters from around the world. And so this niblog is going to be a little bit different than other ones that you may have seen in the past. Normally I just go through and like write on paper and do, do this part um, that you will see and it's sped up and you get to see all the writing, but I feel like these nibs are very special. They need a little bit more explanation. So I'm going to be talking to you all about each nib while I'm writing, but just to give a brief overview before I get into the nib log, if you wanna watch the nib log, I'll have the timestamps and you can skip to that if you want. But if you wanna learn a little bit more about each nib, I'm going to talk about that right now. So there are four Estherbrook specialty nibs and I wrote with all of them, they're very cool. And each of these nibmeisters put a lot of care and thought into these nibs that they crafted for Estherbrook to carry. And I think it's really cool that Estherbrook is able to carry these specialty nibs that you would normally only be able to get by visiting or sending your pen to one of these nibmeisters to have them personally grind the nib down for you. So if you're not familiar with nib grinding, it is a practice where you take a regular nib and you grind the iridium point on it down to a different size. So usually you have to go from bigger to smaller. So like a broad can't become a double broad. You know what I mean? It goes from bigger to a smaller size when you're grinding the nib. So all of these, that's what happened with them. And you can actually see on the nibs, I'll show like a close-up of them. You can see that each one has been ground down a little bit and some of the like gold coating, gold color coating has been ground off of the nib, which I think is really cool. You can see that this is handcrafted, you know? So first I'm going to talk about the journaler nib. This one was crafted by Gina Salarino and it's a medium nib that has been ground down to a stub italic nib, which allows it to write kind of like, like a stub nib, but since it came from a medium size nib, like a smaller size nib, it's not going to be as big as like your typical 1.1 stub nib, like when you write with it. But the thickest point isn't actually so different from the like actual overall size of the nib. So this is a really great one for people who kind of want to dabble in calligraphy, make their writing look a little bit special, look a little bit different, have some flair to it without taking up a lot of space on the page. Since it came from a medium nib, it's not going to be so much bigger than a medium nib. And you can like make your regular handwriting look really nice and have like a little bit of calligraphy flair to it. So that's the journaler nib by Gina Salarino. The next one I'm going to be talking about is the scribe nib by nibmeister Josh Lax. And the scribe nib is very cool. It's, it's like an architect nib if you're familiar with that type of grind on a pen. And so it looks almost like a knife. It has just like, been shaved onto the tip of this nib. I'm not sure if you can really see, but yeah, it's like very sharp. So this one does very, very wide strokes when you put it to the side, but when it's up and down, that knife point creates a very, very thin, thin line. And this nib is great for Arabic and Hebrew calligraphers, but it's also great for like very dramatic, very expressive writing. You can get some really, really nice thick line widths that will suddenly turn into a thin line. So this one is very, very cool, even if you're not just bound to Arabic and Hebrew writing. Okay, the next one is the Needlepoint Nib by Kirk Spear. And this one is a nib that was a fine nib and it was ground down to like an ultra extra fine. It's a very, very fine point. It's really good if you have small handwriting or if you just like 
want to get into the smallest grid space, you know, you want to be really intricate with your writing, very thin compared to the other ones. And some people might feel like this is scratchy, but I feel like when you get to a certain point of thinness in a nib, like all of that feedback is, is going to be concentrated in this small, small point of the tip of the pen. So it's a little bit inevitable and this pen creates a very, very fine point, as you can see, a needle point, as the name might suggest. So this is also really good for quick drying. Like if you maybe smudge your ink a lot, this pen, the, the nib will make the ink dry really quick because you're not putting down a very thick line onto the paper at all. So that is the needle point nib. And last but not least, we have the Techo Nib by CY of Tokyo Station Pens. And this one is a Nag style or Naginata style nib that is like kind of CY's own take on that nib. And what's special about it is you can create lots of different line widths in this one nib. So from the high point, like if you hold the pen at a high angle, you can create some really thin lines. You can even write inverted for super, super fine. And then if you move your pen down low angle, you can create these really, really thick, juicy lines. So see why I wanted this nib to be able to be like your all in one pen. It can do the near needle point thinness or a like near stub thickness all in one pen, depending on how you're holding it. This one takes a little bit of getting used to, but if you've had a Naginata style nib before, this is very, very similar and very easy to use in that way. So that is what's special about the Techo nib. So now we're going to go into the nib log so you can see how all of these perform in a standard way of writing with my handwriting. So I tried my best with these. Hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for watching.